Hi, and welcome to the Torque Social Hour. My name is Dr. Popular. Uh, I work with Torque Magazine, and the Torque Social Hour is a weekly live stream where we bring you WordPress news from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time uh, every Wednesday. And we have a lot of WordPress news to talk about this week, and I'm super excited about our special guest. Uh, we are joined by Mancho, uh, who is the WordCamp Europe, uh, a WordCamp Europe global lead. Uh, right, Mancho? Hi, how is it going? Doc? It's going great. I am having a wonderful day. I am obviously floating in outer space, and uh, these are the stars behind me. This this doesn't fool anyone. I, I need to get like a. I'm working on my background. I kind of like your background here. Let's give uh, people a, a chance to see that. And and you know that's actually a, a great spot right here. Uh, WordCamp Europe is happening next week. And uh, just today, mm -hmm. no, I guess it was yesterday um, that the uh, the agenda was listed. Is that correct? Yes, accurate. Yeah, and it, it took uh, uh, extra time to have the agenda ready because there are a lot of things new at Work and Bureau that I uh, we are sure are going to be very interesting for the audience. Uh, we are talking about long talks, lightning talk. That's, this is the standard series of format, but this year we are also adding workshops, uh, we are adding a discussion panels, and uh, something really new, sponsors interview about their role in the community, in the WordPress community. So yeah, uh, to make uh, this happen took a bit more than, than the previous year, that's why one only one week before we have the agenda ready. Ah, uh, well, I mean, yeah, this is, it's kind of a miracle that this, uh, you know, happens. It's just such a crazy, crazy time. And I, I know switching to uh, doing it live, uh, sorry, doing it um, live streamed. I know that that's always just, that's not probably what you signed up for. You know, this is, you've had this position probably lined up for over a year, right? Like this is not something that's just sprung up on you. Yeah, it's lined up. And you you probably thought you were going to be doing something in Porto, Portugal, right? Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's the, <laughs> the debt we have. <laughs> because last year, in, 2000, in 2020, we, we started uh, to organize a presential event. And, uh, you know, pandemic arise, uh, appears, and we uh, we switch it into an online event and not all the organizers have enough experience with that but finally we did a really good job so yes we are keen to go to porto on 2022 and we hope that is going to happen uh, that marvelous city i i love it uh, I, I was born near of porto in galicia northwest of spain uh, so i know the city and of uh, I'm dreaming of having this work on Europe in 2022. Yeah, you know, I, I am. Um, I actually, this is you can you can answer this question for me. Uh, WordCamp Europe is virtual, but is it sort of? Is there sort of like a location city? Like, are y'all sort of Porto this year, or is it is it all of Europe this year? It's uh, it's online. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's say it, let's say it at that. Yes, uh, we are going to talk about Porto. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, because it's the city, the host city for the next presidential event. But yes, it, it's a virtual and online event, uh, following um, most of the things we did uh, last year, but with many differences. Uh, mm -hmm. We learn uh, about the things we need to improve, and uh, the format is different, and the type of content also. And one of the main difference, uh, Doc, is that we are going to use a um, uh, events platform. Um, we used to we used to have the streaming channels on YouTube. I don't know a single website uh, for people for registering and see the agenda. But this this year we are going to do something quite different. We are going to try something that uh, it never happened before in the corporate community. We are going to use Hubilo, which is a, a webinar like events online events platform. And thinking uh, on the user experience, uh, not only just to watch talks or learning talks and doing networking in a Zoom hall. No, no, this is quite different. Uh, we have uh, special places for sponsors, virtual booth for sponsors, gifts from the sponsors, 
lounges that are like table with discussion panels. We also uh, have everything inside the platform. Uh, and something really important to know what uh, is that people with ticket, uh, they can use the platform and we are going to close the ticket on the 5th of this month. Hmm. So be ready and take your ticket in order to have a really good experience. Uh, we talk on that just to change something regarding last year. And it's an amazing opportunity for doing something great. And of course, as always, we paid special attention to content. And mm -hmm. this year we are also adding the workshops online, which is something that we didn't uh, do last year because workshops is a kind of format not uh, ready for online, but we are going to do something special. And uh, most of them are going to be performed, hold by the Make WordPress team. Uh, because we uh, mix the contributor day, we set the contributor day inside the, the main event. Not mm -hmm. doing a special day for contribution. No, no, no. The contribution day will be happening at the same time that the main event. Which is something new. Something new. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, what, what was the what was the reasoning for that? Was that just uh, so you didn't have to plan an extra day, or was there something else in there? The, the main reason is that uh, we realize that in the online events, people don't don't go too much to the contributor day. So in mm -hmm. order to, uh, and we need to pay special attention to the newbies, to the new people coming to the WordPress community. So if we want to learn, uh, well, to teach, to share information about the contributor day, uh, we thought that the best way will be including it in the in the main content. Mm -hmm. Just for people to know how to contribute, how to set up their profile, Slack channel, not only that. A lot of uh, content uh, related, for example, for Learn WordPress, uh, for the uh, full site uh, editing, for everything uh, inside the, the contributor day. And it will happen in the track number two, where the mm -hmm. workshops are set. So it will be very interesting. The, I'd say that WordCamp Europe, it's, uh, this year, it's doing a lot of new things in order to uh, to have more data or to, to try new ideas, in order to improve thinking always on the user experience, which is something that online events uh, are, most of them are all the same. One talk, another talk, networking, another talk, and that's pretty all. So we, we try and we are going to do something uh, exciting and, and new that we like a lot. Yeah. Well, the uh, I, I, I think a personal goal for me is to participate in Contributor Day for at least an hour. Um, usually when I go to these events, uh, I mean, which has been a while, but usually it's, you know, you got the tripod and you're just looking for folks and, you know, it's just all day talking, interviewing people. It's very fun. It's a great way to, you know, if I have any personal WordPress yes. questions that I, I, I need answered, it's a great way for me to <laughs> actually get, get someone to stop and talk to me and answer them. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think, you know, contributor day sounds, sounds fun. And the, the, the idea that you could kind of bounce into a talk and then go to contributor day, that sounds pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'm kind of hoping I've been wanting to get involved with the WP notify project. So maybe, uh, maybe they'll have something, uh, there that's, uh, that's what, that's my passion, passion project. So we'll, we'll see if they happen to be doing anything that day. For sure. There will be a networking hall or something uh, that, that topic will be, will be covered. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you mentioned, you mentioned, um, uh, the sponsors are doing stuff differently this year, and you mentioned the sponsor interview. Yeah. I I do want to know. Can you tell us? How, is there is there? Can you give us a clue on some swag? Because you mentioned there's some. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> we want we want people to register, so I'm going to tell everything you need. In this case, well, um, uh, online events for the sponsors are are quite different from the presencial ones. I think one of the biggest values of events is to see each other, mm -hmm. to to be, to be have that one-on-one, -on one-to-one -one, uh, meeting with someone. And in the online events, this is, well, uh, it's not, not the best way to do it. And uh, historically, uh, you can see that uh, sponsors uh, have their boots. If they 
send a talk and they are chosen because of the quality of the talk, blah, 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 blah. They can have a presence in the stage following the selection process, the talk selection process. And uh, in the presidential events, I think it's perfect for them, but not for the online events. So this year, we wanted to make a change uh, after a discussion, internal discussion with the deputies, with everyone inside the community. Um, we decided to give them a special presence at the main stage. That is, I think, is something valuable. And uh, this presence, it's in the format of interviews, short ones, four minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes. And uh, they are going to tell us their story with uh, WordPress and how they contribute and what are the benefits uh, they obtain uh, because of the contribution, contributing to the WordPress community. And at the same time, we are going to see the, the faces we are going to, to hear uh, from them, uh, their story, which is, I think, something interesting. At the same time, it's giving them presence uh, in a different way in an online event. And of course, they will have their virtual booths where everyone can go there um, with gifts, with uh, brochures, with whatever the materials you want to have. Also, also, uh, Hubilo, uh, this platform, gives the option to have one-to-one -one meetings. So uh, you can schedule. You every every attending will have a, a press, a, a, yes, an agenda of all the meetings you can gather with people. Of course, if you as an attendee doesn't want to, don't want to attend anyone, you have uh, a, an option to say, I'm not available for anyone. I'm only interested in content. And this is this is the, the basis of the presence of the sponsors in Work and Europe. So instead of having uh, only a virtual booth, we are going to give them presence at the main track, telling us their story uh, related to WordPress and how they contribute. And, uh, and also, uh, they will have the opportunity to meet one-to-one uh, -one with all of you. There is also an option for a building like uh, discussion tables called lounges. Uh, where everyone, uh, every sponsor can have uh, share a topic, and up to sixteen people they can have a discussion panel inside of them. Oh, that's cool. So I think that that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, that's wonderful. The the uh, the idea of those kind of spontaneous conversations happening uh, that that sounds pretty fun. Like a little unconference or you know a little second small conference kind of happening. I, I think those those spontaneous things are what really make conferences special and it's kind of hard to capture that in the live streams but uh, yeah this sounds like yeah, that it's a good it's try. Hard. <laughs> yeah there is nothing that can replace a face to face contact. Mm -hmm. uh, not only by the cameras. That I I don't know I maybe I'm making in my professional life uh, I'm doing like um, 70, 80 events per year. It's one of my main uh, duties at my company. And there is nothing that, that can replace that. Face-to-face uh, -face with people, having conversations in a group, that, not can be, that cannot be replaced with a, with a camera. But technology always helps. And this time we, we, we do this change, not only people watching content or attending a a Zoom hall for doing networking, that maybe there are 50 people who is talking, who is not. It, so we decided to do it this way. It's going to be uh, amazing, I'm sure. I'm sure mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's see here. Um, you, you, the registration is now open. Um, you can go to, uh, uh, I think it's europe.wordcamp.org. Uh, and register, it's totally free. It's only a few questions. It wasn't uh, hard to do. Um, so definitely want to do that. And you said registration closes on the 5th. Did I hear that right? Yes, yes, because we need to uh, transfer all the uh, data needed for, for the platform in order to the people to receive an email with all the instructions to use the platform. It's, it's, mm -hmm. really, used, it's, it's really simple. There, are, there will be only five, uh, six options on the main menu, and that's pretty all. So because the, this platform has, I don't know, how many options for the people to use, and we decided the simpler, the better. So the less is more. So 
in this case, uh, they will have the agenda, um, the main track, the second track, uh, networking, so they can ask for a one-to-one -one meeting with anyone in the event, anyone, any attendee, a sponsor, whatever they want. The launches, this type of tables from the sponsors, and the halls uh, for Q&A uh, &A sessions um, and for networking. That's real, not much options. Yeah. So please it, register before mm -hmm. the 5th. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And is there is there anything else like, um, I saw on the 1st there was a call for volunteers. Uh, I, I imagine y'all could always still use volunteers. That's never like something you would turn away, right? Yes, uh, they are necessary because in this case we need people to, uh, for example, to manage the Q&A sessions or to manage the networking halls. That That's pretty old. Uh, this time uh, we need less because part of the organization is uh, uh, is uh, managed by an external company that help us with all the streaming, the, all the digital part. For example, uh, we are going to use a StreamYard uh, for the main streaming sessions and they help us with the speakers, with the streaming, with the StreamYard. Um, they are going to help, for example, the MCs uh, with everything they need, uh, slides and everything. In this case, we need volunteers just for managing rooms. It's r something really simple and, and but really helpful. We need mm -hmm. it, of course. Yeah, well, that's that's cool. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm excited about this event. Uh, Emily, the editor of Torque, uh, you know, she's uh, got her workshops planned or her her talks planned that she's going to go to. We're going to try to live stream or live tweet uh, some of them. Uh, so yeah, you oh, can watch really? remotely and uh, I guess check on Twitter as we, <laughs> uh, it, you know, it kind of it kind of makes us feel like things are back to normal when we kind of live tweet one of these things. It kind of reminds us of you know what that's like. Uh, I forgot to check the schedule. Is um, is Matt hmm. giving a uh, like kind of like a closing talk this year? Yes, they are. Uh, Matt is going to be there at, at, on the last day. He's going mm -hmm. to close the event. And uh, it, it have, I, I cannot say too much about what he's going to do, uh, but um, what he's going to do is uh, he, he will perform like a demo or something of something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after that, he will be interviewed. It, it's going to be very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I know the right. details. <laughs> All right. I'm going to I'm going to speculate like here. Like a little secret. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this time we used to have Matt um, on the middle of the event. And normally, mm -hmm. if the event is uh, three days long, Matt uh, used to be in the middle of the event. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, uh, um, they asked for closing the event and well, we thought that's a good idea. So let's do it that way. And uh, well, related to content, Matt, of course, is one of the most important things happening in the event. We are mm -hmm. really uh, happy to have Matt every year, uh, every year. And uh, but this year, as I told you, there are different formats, and we are going to pay special attention to full site editing. We are going to pay mm -hmm. special attention to learn WordPress in the track number two, and uh, these the different type of formats. You Not know, the discussion panels, for example. We are going to have a discussion panel about uh, about uh, full site editing, of course. <laughs> it's one of the main topics this year. And another one about, I think it's very interesting, about the future of themes. And this is a really hot topic. And uh, we invited uh, good people to talk about it. And I'm, I, I'm sure we'll have a really good session talking about these topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so full site editing is sort of the hot topic. I, I you know, remember the, the year Gutenberg was the big topic. Uh, you know, of, of WordCamp. Uh, I guess that was WordCamp US, kind of around November. They were kind of. It seemed like they were rushing to get it out around then. Um, so, so I imagine we're going to learn a lot about the the next version of WordPress. And you know, uh, I, yeah, that's that's kind of. It's fun when there's a big thing that we're all excited about, like. You know the like a like like full site editing is all people can talk about right now and uh yes. you know a lot of block stuff too i guess but tied into 
uh, how themes can use blocks and have their own like block managers and stuff. It's a uh, yes. Yeah. Doc, uh, did you went uh, work on Europe uh, in the past? Yeah, I went to WordCamp Europe in Berlin and Serbia. Um, Serbia was amazing. What a what an amazing oh, like that's I Belgrade feel bad. Was, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel bad because that's not a country uh, or, you know, uh, Belgrade is not a place that was like up on my list of countries to, to visit. I, you know, it, it I didn't know it was so unique and so interesting. And, you know, a yes. little bit of that uh, kind of Balkan, a uh, little bit of, you know, Greek, uh, just just an amazing blend of things. Yes. Uh, oh, wow. I loved it. anyway. And and <laughs> and I loved I WordCamp know. Europe as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, um, and Berlin was also um, amazing. I well, my first work camp ever was work camp civil in two thousand fifteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Six years. That's what. And and I I I remember that was a really incredible experience. It, that was my first work camp and was at work camp Europe. Mm -hmm. And well, I I used to be in a, a different type of events, uh, not related to any kind of community. Most of them were related to marketing or entrepreneurship. And the, the, the first thing I went to a, a work camp bureau was, uh, well, uh, it was unbelievable for me. The, the feeling, the atmosphere, it, it was something really, really new for me. I, I felt in love from that moment. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm in the, in the organization team uh, from four years ago. Yes, yes. You know, you you uh, before we started um, uh, live streaming, mm. you and I were talking, and you mentioned uh, you also are involved in the Drupal community, or is it in the Joomla community? Uh, I, I was in both. I was in both of them because most of my uh, activity in my company is uh, go, going to events, and so from my company, we are sponsoring a lot of a lot of events in, in open source communities. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Joomla and Drupal outside WordPress. WordPress, for example, in Spain, uh, we are uh, sponsoring everything, meetups, uh, work camps. So finally, I have um, this uh, experience with other communities thanks to the events. Uh, I had some talks in some of the events. I remember my first uh, uh, I Joom J and Beyond in Barcelona in 2016. Uh, DrupalCon in Barcelona, I think in the previous year in 2015, a huge event of 2,500 people. I was amazed. That's mm -hmm. my experience with other communities. There are different rules, there are different, but we have something in common, which is the open source, uh, the kind of relationship we have between uh, each member of the community. Um, like in WordPress community, the most important a piece of the of everything is people. Mm -hmm. It's people and how they interact and how they help each other. And I, I think that open source communities are the greatest thing in the world because of that, because they pay a lot of attention to people. And that's that was my experience with Drupal and Joomla. Yes. Yeah, that's I. I'm I'm just kind of curious how the events feel. Do they feel like kind of similar? Now or how? I mean, what would you say makes a word a word camp stand out from uh, a Drupal meetup or Joomla? Uh, there are not too much differences because, um, as I told you, both of them are open source communities based on people, and you feel they're like a family. Of course, mm -hmm. if you go to a two thousand five hundred attend this event, <laughs> it, it's different. But when you go for, a, for example, Drupal Madrid or JM Beyond, that are events of maybe 200, 300 people, and you, at the end, after two days of event, you know, like 60, 70 more people that yeah. <laughs> in the previous week. And yes, but are more similar, really similar. I, I don't see too much differences. Uh, because both uh, all of them are based on, on on communities. I see a lot of differences with other type of events, like for example, marketing typical marketing events in Spain. But there's no well, there is everyone trying to sell to anyone at every booth. It's uh, well talks that the content it's always with commercial purposes. 
uh, that, that this is the, the events that are completely different than the community. But if you see uh, Drupal, Joomla, and uh, WordPress uh, events are, are quite quite the same, quite the same. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, you know, I, I think on that, I want to uh, transition a little bit to just some of the other uh, news that we have uh, just just recently. And we can come back to some more WordCamp Europe news uh, later. But um, this is something uh, I was hoping Luke would be able to join us today to talk about because Luke uh, Car uh, Carbus has been uh, a frequent co-host and he has been pushing uh, to get WordPress to uh, officially block uh, Flock by default. Uh, and Flock is a new um, Google, I'm going to call it kind of like a tracking system. It's, it's their uh, federated learning of cohorts and just a, a system they have of, of grouping people together that are that they consider similar. And instead of like uh, tracking my behavior, they would be tracking behavior of a thousand people very similar to me and what they do and then giving ads based on that. It's uh, Google says it's um, a way of kind of giving individuals their privacy back while still being able to kind of curate to them. Uh, many people, including the EFF, have um, had issues with Flock, and we've talked about it on the show here. And uh, you know, as I said, Luke, uh, you know, wrote on uh, WordPress.org uh, a suggestion to um, block Flock by default. You could go and allow it later, but uh, it seemed um, it seemed more about. Luke's suggestion seemed more about making a statement. WordPress is a very large community. It's an open source. It's you know, uh, forty percent of the web, or you know, uh, yeah. Uh, That's the so, big figure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so you know, if WordPress uh, took a stand against Flock, then that would be quite quite a you know a statement. Um, that ended up kind of falling through. There was a lot of discussion about it, and it, it just didn't really seem like a lot of other people were into it enough to you know add it to core uh and so that's why i was very surprised by this announcement i, I just read on wp tavern uh sarah gooding uh wrote about joomla and drupal both uh deciding to block block uh yeah. so that's that's just really interesting i i wonder what what the conversation was like on their side that was different than what was happening on wordpress's side well Google is trying to find a replacement of the third-party cookie system, uh, but the way they are doing it is not. The, I don't know. I know how to say it, but if uh, the open source communities we are, I don't know, pushing for having a free internet, uh, um, having a, you know, a free website where the users first, privacy first, are the, are mandatory. And uh, there is a threat regarding what uh, Google is trying to, well, it's in its uh, preliminary uh, uh, phase at this moment, flock. But uh, there are trackers, maybe there are trackers that can identify a single user inside a co cohort. And that's the, the, that's the main problem. Instead of I don't know, avoiding or replacing, solving the third-party cookies. It seems that they are uh, doing a doing the job for this type of companies because uh, because if someone can identify a an user inside a cohort, they have all the data they need there. They, they don't need to gather it all over the internet on on different uh, places. So I think it's uh, reasonable that unless Google make uh, uh, made up a change in the way that Flock uh, is based, uh, everyone uh, up to the moment uh, should block it. And that's my opinion, personal opinion. Here in Europe, you know, we have the GDPR. We are, that's something really good for people, for the users. Uh, I think for the first time I saw something really useful for uh, setting up uh, first the users instead of the interest of other companies. But it's also true that there are companies that need uh, advertisement for a living. So it's necessary <laughs> to find a solution and uh, at, this, uh, at this moment, Flock, it doesn't make too much sense in, this, in these terms. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you, you mentioned GDPR and uh, as as the the um, between the two of us, the expert on uh, European uh, Internet usage. I'm just kind of curious. Um, there was some talk and I think it might have been, uh, I would say, corporate propaganda, maybe, you know, that we heard in the U.S. about how GDPR is, is you know, going to be scary or, or, you know, have consequences for users. And I'm just kind of curious, um, I guess, two things. Uh, now that GDPR is, you know, a few years old, um, how do Europeans kind of feel about it? Like, are they largely for it? And then I guess the follow up is, were there any consequences that have, you know, been resolved or anything? Well, I think people used to have the cookies uh, policy in front of every website. Uh, it's true that uh, there are still companies that uh, are not, uh, they don't accomplish the GDPR. <laughs> it was time ago, you know. Uh, and there are some fines, uh, and a really good one fines, uh, really big amounts of money about that. But the truth is that um, everyone gets used to the, the cookies uh, policy in front of every website. I think it's good because uh, they protect the rights of the users. I don't want to you to, to save my cookies, uh, to store my cookies, anything. And uh, uh, there are still companies that, for example, uh, uh, GDPR also uh, needs of a text, uh, legal text on every website. And there is uh, a lot of people copy, uh, copying uh, the, the legal text of each other. <laughs> every website uh, but I think it's working I think mm -hmm. it's working because uh, people can choose at this moment hey yes I'm fine with uh, your uh, cookies policy and I want to receive uh, advertisement following my profile okay that's fine you can do it but if you prefer not to receive anything regarding advertisement or uh, customized advertisement everything regarding cookies you have also the, the option to do it. There is no fear. There are a lot of talks right now in meetups uh, regarding how to manage uh, the data that you can gather for the, your audience uh, mm -hmm. with, co with cookies or without cookies. And uh, finally, most of the people uh, realize that people that uh, choose cookies is an interesting customer. It's like a filter. Finally, you have an audience that really like to have your um, your advertisement or to uh, save your profile of lecture. So um, there are a lot of talks about it. Um, from my point of, uh, from my point of view, I see there is a change in <clears throat> people measuring and analyzing stats from the websites, thinking more on a quality basis and not in the amount of hundreds of thousands of visits on my website. No, no, no. Uh, which ones are accepted the cookies, which one not? And that's very interesting, uh, mm -hmm. Doc. That's, that's very interesting. So so um, GDPR happened uh, in, in Europe, and then I think two years afterwards, California uh, had the California Consumer Protection uh, Rights, the CCPR, CCPA. Uh, CCPA. And yeah, and they're they're basically a, a light version of GDPR. You could tell that there was a few tweaks, you know, to I think Google and Facebook managed to kind of like protect themselves a little bit more here and kind of you know. But for the most part, I think uh, I I thought GDPR was uh, or CCPA was going to be you know mostly about cookies. And it seems the things that have actually affected me have been about um, disclosing of hacks and breaches, you know, which there have been so many of <laughs> but like now we we yes. you were required you know within 30 days uh to you know disclose that and there's all these kind of other you know things other than cookies uh and you're right like um it, yes, at this point I, I don't even notice every single site i go to has that little cookie banner and that's 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 probably because of you know the gdpr and ccpa uh, but that's just something, you know, I, I don't even notice anymore. It's just on every site and it just click no, click no. Uh, but like, yeah, occasionally I have a small site and I think I've had two people reach out to me for, you know, requesting their data get deleted. 
and luckily WordPress makes that easy, but it still it still was a little weird. Uh, you know, as a small as a small time you know owner, it's you know, and someone saying like with these people who reached out to me, they reached out and said if you don't do this within two weeks, you could pay a fine. And I think they were using an automated tool. I think there were I think there's some sort of privacy protecting thing that sends these missing letters out. And so like, you know, a small mom and pa shop gets this thing that sounds really scary. And, and and luckily WordPress made it very easy, but it was, I could see if someone didn't know about it, I could see being very scared by that. Uh, it almost felt like a, <laughs> it almost felt like kind of a shakedown. You know, the email was sort of like, you know, you're gonna have to pay up if you don't do this. And it sort of felt like these privacy companies are maybe filling some sort of gap where they might start trying to get lawsuits to happen so they can make it, I don't know. It, it, that's that's a weird thing that I've seen, but that's super small. Uh, for the most part, I feel like I've really benefited living in California by the CCPA. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's good. Uh, um, also, GDPR is not only about cookies. It's about the way you manage the information of your customers, the way you let them, <clears throat> let your customers uh, manage that information. Like you said, if you uh, they have. Most of us, we have tools, most of us, we have tools to delete. If the customer wants to delete their information, it's going to be deleted. No problem with that. But it's also the way you manage the databases of your company. Where are they? Storage, um, the technology behind it. So it's very complete. Um, and one, <laughs> uh, something funny that happened when in May 25th of May 2019, I think was the day that many people uh, took the opportunity to uh, does, um, unsubscribe for the newsletter. Mm -hmm. That's real. That's because you have a, a mandatory the option to unsubscribe for uh, any newsletter. So uh, I remember that many databases of many companies uh, were really smaller <laughs> after that day because people uh, finally, if they are not interested in something, they are going to leave it. They are going to mm -hmm. quit. They had the opportunity, they did it. Many people saw that like something bad, but at the end it's not bad. It's a question of quality. So mm -hmm. the people you have now in your newsletter, the subscribers of your newsletter, there's people that are really interested in your content, really interested. So, well, GDPR is very complete and I'm happy that in the States you have the CCPA and, and hopefully uh, something really similar will happen there. Yeah. 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 And and we went on quite a tangent. Thank you for as, as, answering that. Uh, I, I know you're not a legal expert, but since GDPR came up, I was like, oh, actually, no. we, I haven't thought about that in a while. How are, how are things going for that? And it seems like, you know, I think both of us think it's it's going well. Um, I, I wanted to transition to some other uh, WordPress news. Um, well, just kind of tech news in general. Uh, there's been a ton of acquisitions, uh, yeah. one of which I just saw about on Twitter, Stack Overflow sold uh, for $1.8 billion. Um, Stack Overflow is, I probably don't have to explain this, uh, but it is uh, a valuable tool for developers who just want to Google a quick answer for something that someone else, you know, asked, you know, years ago. It's just been like kind of this valuable wiki. Uh, a friend of mine, Jeff Atwood, was uh, the founder of uh, Stack Overflow, and he tweeted today that uh, there are now 61 new millionaires uh, made by wow. that one $1.6 billion acquisition. Uh, so, you know, awesome for Stack yeah. Overflow. Uh, Jeff is now working at a company called Discourse, which is a, a forum software. Uh, and then a couple other, you know, more WordPress uh, acquisitions. Uh, Iconic uh, announced that they're joining the Liquid Web family of brands. Uh, and I'm gonna just skip over to, oh, and um, yeah, Liquid Web recently added GiveWP, uh, who I should mention, they were they were guests on the show uh, not long ago. Um, another acquisition, uh, this one was quite a surprise. Uh, we have Delicious Brains uh, announcing the acquisition of Advanced Custom Fields, uh, wow. Elliot Condon's project. And that's, yeah, that's huge. I don't know if this was today or yesterday. Uh, and they did it kind of annoyingly in an audio format, so I had to listen to the podcast <laughs> to, uh, to hear it, but I could have scrolled down uh, to see all the spoilers here. Uh, Advanced Custom Fields is 10 years old. 
Uh, and Delicious Brains, I think, is older than that. I think they had a WP Migrate tool uh, that that was around, you know, 15 years ago, I think. Uh, but they're both very old, old companies. And yeah, it, it, so you were shocked by this by this announcement, right? Yeah, but makes sense. Makes sense. Um, I think the 2020 and the pandemic, COVID-19, everything uh, makes sense. For example, regarding the what, the first acquisition you meant, uh, because it's an online uh, learning online uh, platform. Um, uh, and yes, uh, finally, uh, this uh, confinement um, and pandemic uh, boost everything regarding online. Not not only how to learn in, in WordPress, WordPress, sorry, in learning platforms, uh, but so it's it's I think it's reasonable that uh, uh, people is interested in acquiring everything regarding online, everything regarding online. Uh, about the, the the second one, I think it was the one regarding liquid web, makes makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think most of the hosting providers at this moment, we are thinking on how to improve the user experience, how to improve the onboarding, how we are offering with every uh, hosting package. Uh, so finally, these acquisitions make, make a lot of sense. Not, not too much time ago, I think, one.com, another hosting company, uh, bought uh, WP Rocket. Hmm. Another acquisition thinking in this time, this time for WordPress users directly directly for WordPress users. Makes a lot of sense. And the last one, well, approving with more than 1 million uh, activations at this moment. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's quite a good operation. No? It makes a lot of sense. But paying attention to hosting providers, as because I, I work in a hosting provider, um, I think there is a, this is the moment for most of the companies to start to build a product around WordPress. It's not only WordPress and all the plugins and themes that are available for it, but hosting providers finally is the first contact point with WordPress for many people, many people that didn't know WordPress before. So finally, you try to offer to every user a a special, a special um, experience. If you are an agency or a freelancer Oops. with 60 websites, 100 websites, you will find all the collection of, of plugins you need, plus a lot of tools for agencies. But if you are a single user with a, I don't know, a small business in a American city, and you don't have, didn't have any previous experience with WordPress, you are going to enter a hosting provider, and you are going to call everything you need. The wizard for installing WordPress in three clicks, plus the WooCommerce, plus themes, plugins, and everything around the problem. I, I think it's it's not the future. Well, the present, but also the future of uh, uh, the WordPress hosting providers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm on advanced custom fields plugin page now, uh, and you're right, they have, uh, you know, over a million uh, installs and that's just for the free WordPress version. I, there's, you know, advanced custom fields pro and, um, you know, other places people can get it so that, you know, it's, it's hard to track this, but, uh, this is, this is a plugin run by just one person, uh, or it has been, uh, <laughs> Elliot, Elliot Condon, you know, says he's, you know, he's, he's just not wanting to be a boss of anyone. You know, he wants to just work on his own. He had this plugin that's done great. Uh, and during that time, you know, his options were to hire a customer service person and have to manage them or to do customer service himself. So he would, he did customer service himself. He did his, you know, um, all the instructions, all the tutorials, uh, you know, Everything. Uh, no, that's yeah. A job. That's a, yeah. So, that's uh, so, so along with this, you know, delicious brains announcement on the podcast, they were like talking about the new jobs are creating right away for like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna hire a video guy, uh, you know, a delicious brains video guy. But like, you know, they were they were talking about all these roles that like, he, <laughs> it was just kind of funny to think of like these like six or seven people that were gonna get hired to basically replace kind of one person, uh, or you know, to to give that support that one person had been doing for the last ten years, which just sounds r rough. I mean, I'm I'm happy for him to incredible. You know, I'm happy for for this person that wow, such an acquisition. <laughs> yeah. 
and and I think one more one more kind of online. Uh, this happened a little earlier, about two weeks ago. Uh, but Brian Crossgard has uh, left post status. Um, kind of kind of a, a similar place, a great forum. Uh, you know, uh, similar to like Stack Overflow in my mind. Uh, great place to get information for for WordPress. Uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, he has sold his uh, shares to Corey Miller, uh, who they have been longtime partners on this project. And uh, he hasn't announced what he's going to work on, um, but I know uh, the name is escaping me. Oh, I think it's Ledger Domain. Uh, he, uh, Brian has also uh, been early on the blockchain uh, kind of, kind of uh, ride and uh, blockchain kind of blowing up the way it has the last few years. I wouldn't be surprised if he pivots, uh, you know, lets Corey do post status and um, Brian Crossgard just really focus on uh, his Ledger project that verifies blockchain addresses and just sort of uh, provides information. If you, you know, enter a wallet address, you can kind of get the information you need and stuff like that. Uh, that, that world is blowing up right now and I could, I could totally see wanting to focus on that for a while. He was he was one of the five, one of the founders of uh, uh, Post Status. I I thought Brian Crossgard uh, uh, founded it, uh, and I might be wrong. Uh, I I thought it was his project, and then he brought Corey on. Mm. But uh, but yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, familiar enough to to say. Oh, I just missed. Um, okay, no, it's this type of decisions, you know, uh, that leaving the the business you've created so uh, i i hope uh, he has something uh, bigger in his <laughs> in his scope for the next month we'll know about that we we'll know about that uh yeah and i i should have i should have gotten uh, his his other project that he's still involved with is ledger status uh which is the uh, kind of ledger. cryptocurrency podcast and uh tools uh so hmm. Ledger status, easy to remember. <laughs> Post status, ledger status. Uh, ledger status. Yeah. Uh, that's so, good. That's good. Cryptocurrencies yeah. are one of the main topics here in, I think, worldwide at this moment. In Spain, if you see uh, Twitter trends, there is always something about cryptocurrencies. Always yeah. something about Dodge. Uh, about Bitcoin, always, always news in every single newspaper online, newspaper, what do you want? Yeah, that's a hot topic also. Yeah, it's funny. I just checked trending topics for me on Twitter and Stack Overflow is the, the number one trending topic on my Twitter feed. Uh, so they, they, they know what I'm interested in, I guess, <laughs> or what I'm talking about. Um, let's see here. Uh, you know, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned for WordCamp Europe, uh, that there's this new technology that's kind of making new ways to to host the event and have interactivity and stuff like that. And it just kind of reminded me of um, uh, there's a there's a company doing a live streaming platform called Livee. Uh, I think it's pronounced Livee. It's L-I-V-E-E. -E. And they reached out to me and a bunch of yo-yoers to get involved uh, just trying to use the product or whatever. I'm, I'm a yo-yoer when I'm not talking about WordPress. And... Um, the, the thing about Livey, you know, because there's so many live streaming tools out there, Livey, I think, decided to really carve a niche, uh, getting magicians and jugglers, uh, kind of these nerdy kind of performance things, you know, not not right. like trying to, they could have appealed to musicians, they could have appealed to, uh, you know, people playing video games or whatever, but they decided to try to find people who, you know, do these skill toys and really focus on them. And they, their, their, their gimmick of Livey is that it, they have a battle format where uh, if, if someone joins your live stream, there's a little counter and then there's five minutes of you and them, you know, just doing your thing. And then at the end of five minutes, there's this, you know, voting uh, that happens. So it's like, it's, you know, sort of like B-boys, uh, break dancers, you know, like, um, you know, being able to kind of break dance on live stream in different rooms. And then, yeah, it was, it was weird. So I, I, um, I competed in a yo-yo battle on a live streaming platform targeting, you know, skill toys. Uh, and, and I won, uh, that was Saturday morning. That was the start of my day. I had no idea. Like the whole thing was very awkward. I, you know, I, I've kind of 
I've kind of, I, I love hip hop and I've, uh, I don't freestyle, but like I've gone to plenty of those. I've hosted some and seed some, uh, I kind of am familiar with working the crowd and all that stuff. And yet I sort of felt like, do we start? What do we do? You know, and it's just five minutes of just doing something. It's not like you and them. And so you're not riffing on them. It's just, you're, you're just yo-yoing for five minutes and you know, on the tiny bit of your screen, you see someone else yo-yoing. It was, it was weird. It was a weird Sounds thing. Funny. Sounds funny. Yeah. Sounds funny. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. Uh, so that, that was, you know, the beginning of my weekend was, you know, using, using, uh, this thing and, uh, yeah. And then afterwards, uh, the rest of my weekend was assembling yo-yos. I just got uh, 150 yo-yos in and, um, uh, I decided to live stream me testing each one. Cause you know, when you, when you assemble them you want to make sure they work before you mail them out. So, you know, I spent an hour on Instagram. Uh, I didn't think anybody would care, but like people, like I even archived it and people are watching the archive. You know, it's kind of funny what people will watch. You know, I'm not, I'm not judging people. Uh, I, I appreciate that they're interested, but I didn't, I didn't think anybody would want to see me. I'm not doing tricks. I'm just assembling yo-yos and throwing them assembling yo-yos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah and i actually threw my arm out uh from that like you know from from yo-yoing too much just repetitive stress so uh <laughs> so my old man injury uh here in my 40s is that i i threw my arm out yo-yoing over the weekend so that's <laughs> that's yo-yoing a lot <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. it has consequences <laughs> yeah. Not only in social networks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah. So, Sounds so that funny. was. Uh, Sounds funny. Yeah, and and uh, and um, just kind of curious what, what what you've been up to. Um, your your WordCamp Europe is happening next week. I know today was crazy meetings, and I'm sure everything else was. Have you had any kind of fun activities in between all that? Uh, well, this week no, <laughs> only on weekends because. Uh, one week before every event, it doesn't matter if it, it's uh, presential, online, or whatever. One week before the event, there is always a nightmare of things to do. And so during this, these days, during the week, I, uh, I'm really focused on work, but during the weekends, I used to do, because this is an island, so we have sea, we have beach. Uh, I have my hobby, which is uh, riding horse. <laughs> I do horse. Ho <laughs> I thought you were going to say surfing or something. You're, you're like surrounded by water. And, <laughs> and after the riding horse classes, I'm doing jumping with my daughter. Uh, she's quite better than me. And uh, after that, we are going. We used, we used to be uh, to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. So like a quite calm weekend before the storm. <laughs> And that's that's my hobby. Um, playing piano, um, that's pretty all. But during the week, uh, doc, um, just working and maybe reading a book or watching some TV. That's pretty mm -hmm. all. Well, um, you know, I I hope that when the WordCamp Europe is, uh, I think the fifth through the seventh, or no, the uh, seventh through the eighth. Seventh uh, yes, through the ninth. Eighth and ninth. Yeah. Yes, three days. There we go. <laughs> uh, and so hopefully after the ninth, you'll be able to, you know, get back uh, to, to riding horses and having some relaxing time. Uh, and this, this is weekend. just a room. Yeah. Uh, this is just a reminder to awesome. uh, to to people to go to Europe dot WordCamp dot org to register now, not delay. Uh, so get on that easy to spot button. It's a very easy form to fill out. But it's it's free. Help the organizers a lot. Yeah, so it's, so it's easy and free. <laughs> yeah, so be sure to and, do and that. It's very important mm -hmm. before the fifth of this month. So three days, because yeah. um, um, before the fifth, you will have your ticket, and you have the opportunity to to join us in the platform uh, we have for this for this event. But if happens that you, uh, I don't know, uh, you watch, talk and doc. On, on the 6th and you uh, want to see Work and Europe, you will have the opportunity to join us in the YouTube channel. So we'll be streaming the event live on YouTube. But it's not the same 
It's not the same because on YouTube you will only have access to the content, which is of course the most important thing. But if you join us uh, with your ticket and um, during the event you will have the opportunity to network with people, one-to-one -one meetings, uh, have a lot of gifts coming from the sponsors. It's a completely different experience. So I recommend that you going there, register, get your ticket before the 5th. Yes, yes. Thanks. Tom. Absolutely. So, uh, and yeah, uh, Mancho, I really want to appreciate, uh, say, say thank you for joining us today. Uh, and thank you for your work and the rest of the, uh, the volunteers work uh, with WordCamp Europe. We look forward to seeing you next year in Porto. And uh, this year, I think I'm just going to uh, watch the live stream and have like a little kiddie pool set up, have a little umbrella and my coffee and just kind of pretend that I'm on the beach uh, listening to <laughs> listening to WordPress talks. Uh, if people want to uh, follow along with uh, WordCamp Europe uh, or if they want to follow your personal projects, you, you also um, I, I know you're shy to say it, but, uh, you know, uh, SiteGround Spain manager when we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the company that helps you go to these events. Uh, and you know, it makes this possible for for everyone. So shout out to SiteGround. Uh, but if people want to find out more about about you and what you're working on, what's a good way to do that? Well, if they want to know more about me, they have LinkedIn. I have my profile, Jose Ramon Padron, the, the same name. And in Twitter, they can find me in uh, Moncho Mat. It's Moncho. It's my name, my nickname in Spanish, Mat of Madrid. Moncho Mat. Yes, that's my profile. There we go. <laughs> That's my profile. Yeah, I'm not right smart on. active in social networks. This is the only one I pay at, uh, some attention. Yes, this is my profile. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, so uh, let me check the calendar. I should have had this ready in my notes. Uh, let's see who we have for next week. Uh, we are a weekly live stream show, so you can join us. Uh, every Wednesday from three to uh, three to four p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, uh, David Vogelpohl and um, also Chris Garrett are going to be joining us next week. Uh, there's been some big news uh, that the Studio Press and Genesis uh, teams have about uh, Genesis Pro. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of that stuff. I'm going to learn about that stuff next week. So uh, join us next week uh, for another live stream. And thanks to everyone who watched. And uh, thanks again, Mancho, for joining us. It's been great chatting with you. You're welcome. Thank you for having us and explaining about WorkUp Europe. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Doug. Cheers.